For a while, I strongly believed in the Big Bang Theory of Monsignor Georges Lemaitre that describes the birth of the universe as follows. The universe began from a single primordial atom that contained all of its matter and radiation, even space and time themselves, which was compressed into a hot, dense mass just a few millimeters across. Then came the explosion, the Big Bang, in trillion trillionth of a second, expanding that pebble-sized origin to, to astronomical scope. And after approximately 13.8 billion years, the primordial atom became the universe as we know now. The idea that an atom the size of a few millimeters can contain all matter and radiation, even space and time, that later make up the entire universe is mind-blowing. Add to the fact that that same atom can provide itself with newly created time and space while it grows. It truly is miraculous. Then I started doubting the Big Bang as described by Le Maître. One evening, my mind was completely changed when I found out that in reality, our universe is filled with zillions of smaller universes that function like ours. The method that describes the existence of these smaller universes can be equally applied to our large universe in a far less complicated and incomprehensible process than Le Maître suggests. That evening, while working in a barn turned library at the corner of my backyard, I sensed a storm was coming. Hurrying back to the main house, I noticed a small bamboo leaf dangling from a small tree branch. The leaf touched the top of my nose, but I barely felt it. The incident was insignificant, but I could not help from thinking that this poor leaf looked embarrassed and apologetic. By fluttering faster and faster, it seemed to tell me that the strong wind was the cause of its misbehavior. Observing its pattern of flutters, I suddenly understood, in the bamboo leaf, a message much more significant than a pardon me, sir. At that moment, I observed my surroundings. The evening was filled with activities, movement. The wind was strong and chilly. Above my head, up in the sky, the clouds soaked heavily with rainwater, gathered quickly, preparing for a violent downpour. Everything was moving, and I was not an exception. Planted in the dirt or standing immobile on the ground, the bamboo tree and I were also participants in the big picture of a universe in motion. The tree, my cute, newly acquired bamboo leaf included, was heading east with the Earth's spinning velocity. A few feet behind, standing still at one place, I chased after it with the exact same speed. Additionally, the Earth moved around the Sun, spinning. Our Milky Way galaxy also moves at 130 miles per second and the universe is constantly expanding. Everything moves in space. Le Maître's faulty theory of the origin of the universe. Is it physically possible that a force coming from an exploded primordial atom the size of a pebble after 13.8 billion years becomes the force that causes the motion and activities of the entire universe at this very instant? Is it possible that the same billion-year-old force keeps increasing power and velocity to expand the universe faster and faster? The incident involving the bamboo leaf made me contemplate the entire concept of the primeval atom, proposed by Monsignor Georges Lemaitre, which suggests that the universe has always contained the matter and energy necessary for its continued expansion and evolution. If we think deeply about the specific amount of space that Lemaitre believed was needed for the atom to expand and grow, his theory starts to unravel. Additionally, Lemaitre fails to consider this space outside the primeval atom in the universe that allows it to expand and move at this moment and in the future. The universe cannot create something beyond its border that must be already existent to welcome its moving in. Lemaitre's theory collapses. So does his universe that was born from a primordial explosion known as the Big Bang. Understanding this left me again wondering how the universe was really made. And then I saw it. The creation of the universe can be found in an orange. Among dozens of ripe oranges, this one stood out because it was the biggest. Thanks to the final few faint strokes of the evening sun that got through the gap between the dark clouds, 
This one orange shone and attracted my eyes. Immediately came an epiphany. The making of an orange appears so trivial and simple because the process is familiar, becoming a normality that impresses no one. However, if you carefully consider and think deeply, you will see that the development of the orange is also miraculous. Unlike Lemaitre's universe that mysteriously feeds itself from the beginning to the end, the orange depends on the tree to keep on living. Through the peduncle, the tree continuously supplies sap to its newly born fruit. Except lacking the beginning with a big noise caused by the collision of atoms and the mystery of matter, space and time condensed in a tiny space, as Lemaitre theorized, the orange bears all the characteristics of the universe that we can observe and know about. Its birth is silent to the human ear. Its growth reaches the peak before heading to the end, like all other living things. The making of an orange is similar to all the makings of every other living thing on Earth, or at least zillions of fruits ever in existence. Contrary to Lemaitre's suggestion, the Creator probably had chosen the same method of making living things to fabricate our universe. Why not? It already works well. Why bother to invent a peculiar new way that requires the mysterious force to squeeze the entire universe into a tiny primordial atom and then make it explode, building itself up as Lemaitre suggested? Following this epiphany, my perception of the universe did not diminish in the slightest. However, upon further contemplation, the proposed theories of its formation, as posited by esteemed physicists, appeared to be highly implausible and difficult to accept as credible explanations. The Pomological Growth of the Universe The question of whether the universe can be considered a living entity is a matter of ongoing debate within the scientific community. On the surface, it may seem that the universe is composed primarily of inanimate matter, such as mineral and rock. However, recent observations and research have revealed that the universe is not only expanding, but also actively growing at an accelerating rate. This growth is thought to be fueled by the presence of dark matter, which acts as a nutritious sap for the universe, providing the necessary material for its continued expansion. While it is not yet clear if the universe can truly be classified as a living being, these findings suggest that it may possess qualities that are more complex and dynamic than previously assumed. As an exercise in observational analysis, it is recommended to examine the growth and development of a fruit-bearing tree within one's own garden or local environment. While the specific example of an orange tree is used here, any other type of fruit-bearing plant may be substituted. The process of the formation of an orange is a subject of scientific study. It begins with the presence of an empty space and the emergence of a small bud on a tree branch, which then proceeds to develop into a fully formed fruit. While this process may seem commonplace, it is worth considering the parallels between the growth of an orange and the development of the universe. Both involve the transformation of seemingly insignificant matter into something of greater complexity and significance. The question of whether the formation of an orange is any less miraculous when compared to the universe's creation is a matter of perspective. Being born and bred the same way, they are both the creator's product. The orange's flesh gets a better design with the artistic layout pattern, while the pattern of the universe appears chaotic, looks no more sophisticated than a coconut. They are both magnificent. If inside an orange lives a tiny creature whose size is comparable to that of a human being in the universe, it should be amazed by its own orange universe. And if we can provide this tiny, curious and intelligent creature with something like the Hubble, it surely will produce a great number of photos that are no less fantastic than our space pictures. Oranges and all the other similar fruity universes have our fields, backyards, farms, etc. to inhabit we should find a home in our universe. Perhaps the Garden of Eden would do. In this garden, on a branch of the giant universe tree, one day, the day of creation, a primordial bud appears and grows. Starting with small size as a pebble, it gets bigger and bigger in every nanosecond by being pumped up with dark matter that acts as the sap of the universe tree.
It is similar to every other fruit's growing process. Capturing the Cosmic Energy The study of the universe's formation is an ongoing area of research, with new discoveries continually being made. One of the most significant recent discoveries is the existence of dark matter, which is theorized to be the force responsible for the movement and operation of all matter in the universe, from the largest celestial bodies to the smallest particles and atoms. The existence of dark matter easily helps us comprehend the pomological nature of the growth of the universe. While the existence of dark matter has primarily been inferred through its gravitational effects, the implications of this discovery are far-reaching. One potential practical application of this knowledge is the possibility of harnessing dark matter's energy to serve as a sustainable and renewable energy source. The idea would be to develop a technology that could capture and convert the cosmic energy of dark matter into a usable form. This could potentially provide a solution to humanity's energy needs without causing harm to the environment. Such a breakthrough would require the contributions of experts from various fields, including physics, engineering and energy technology. If scientists, indeed if humanity, could untap and harness this energy, the future of the Earth and all living things might look something like this. In approximately 4 billion years, the Sun will cool off. Our vital heating source will become extinct. Instead of terror and panic, everybody at that time will see this disastrous phenomenon as a huge entertainment event. They will have a global celebration to honor the historic moment. For weeks and even months, people will gather to feast their eyes with the last sunrises and sunsets. They watch and say farewell to the dying sun from beaches, deserts, top of mountains, and in their backyards, on a planet that will now be comfortably warmed by dark matter's power. It is an infinite energy resource that will last the full length of the universe's existence.